Weaponized incompetence. What is it and does it show up in your marriage? That's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm Leslie Dorries, your marriage coach, creator of the Hero Husband Project, and owner of Foundations Coaching. And weaponized incompetence is pretending that you don't know how to do something so that you can get out of doing it. Um, and it works maybe on a temporary basis, but long term, it's going to really upend your marriage. So, um, you know, this is if you know this is happening in your relationship and, you know, it's 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 causing problems, then you want to fix it. But I've been talking about um, the ment mental, mental and emotional load, which is generally taken on by women, although I do think that women need to stop that. Um, but it's basically taking ownership of everything that's not going on in your relationship, right? And weaponized incompetence is a really nasty way of getting out of doing your fair share of stepping up to your responsibilities. And let me be clear, weaponized incompetence is not really not knowing how to do something. And weaponized incompetence is also not um, doing something the way your partner wants you to do it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about pretending that you do not know how to do something. And this kind of came up this week when I was talking to one of my clients because um, he's being accused of weaponized incompetence, and that's really not what's going on. It's his wife has expectations of him that, number one, have not been verbalized, and number two, he has not agreed to. Um, and in some cases, also, even when he does try to do what what he's been requested, uh, which, again, that's a whole other topic as to whether or not he should be requested, but that's, hang on, stay, stay with me. Um but it's just that he's not doing it the way that she would do it. And that is not weaponized incompetence. That is um, basically a power struggle that is going on. And it can play a role into this because what happens a lot of times is if I can't, if, if I'm always getting in trouble for not doing it well enough or fast enough or in the way you want me to do it, that um, you know, then, then basically, I'm just not even going to bother. Now, that kind of thing can turn into weaponized incompetence, but weaponized incompetence is basically abdicating your responsibilities in your relationship. And I don't think that anybody has the right to opt out of a major aspect of their relationship, whether that's parenting, whether that's running the household, whether that's finances whether that's intimacy, I don't care what it is. If you are part of a relationship, you have a responsibility to be the best partner you can be, which means, and if you're, you know, there are very few of us out there that can't learn to do something, okay? Um, laundry is not exactly rocket science. It's pretty straightforward. Putting the dishes away, again, not rocket science. Putting a diaper on your baby, not rocket science, okay? As long as it's on the right end of the baby, you're okay. Um, but we can, we can get into this very unhealthy pattern of I don't want to do this, so I'm going to pretend I don't. Um, I go to the grocery store with the list and I somehow miss half the things on the list because I don't really want to go to the grocery store. The, the better option than weaponized incompetence is to reach real agreement about what you are each going to do. And there's a kind of a flip side, which I'm going to be talking about next week, which is about the overachiever, underachiever. The, the idea that if, and by the way, this is how women get themselves into trouble. If I don't do it, it won't get done. Now, this is, you can get into this really nasty cycle, and this is where weaponized incompetence comes in. Um, because what we've got going on here is a power struggle as opposed to working as a team, which to me, marriage is the ultimate team sport. As I said before, you don't get to opt out of any 
um, important aspect of the relationship. I mean, I remember after my father-in-law died, my mother-in-law, who was a very competent woman, was claiming she couldn't balance her checkbook. Of course she could balance her checkbook. It's math. And even and you and you and we have calculators now. She didn't even have to do it in her head. But it was something she wasn't comfortable with because he had always handled the, the bills. So I can understand discomfort. I can understand not knowing. And I can understand not wanting to do things. Um, back when my husband and I moved into this house, he was commenting to me about all the women in the neighborhood who were mowing the lawn. Now, I'm terrified of lawnmowers. So I said to him, and your point would be what? I don't care if every woman on the planet is mowing the lawn. This woman is not mowing the lawn because I'm terrified of lawnmowers. So for me, it isn't about um, weaponized incompetence. It's me basically saying, I'm not going to do that because it scares me. And I'm honest about it, right? And, you know, if your partner doesn't do things your way, that's okay. There's a way to do this where you set a standard and you set a time frame, and everybody's in agreement and we choose what we're doing. But when you, when you pretend not to do anything or not to be able to do something, first off, you're lying to your partner, which is not great for your marriage. And second off, you keep dumping things onto their plate, which also is not really good for your marriage. So it's a decision about whether or not you're going to step up and have the conversation now in a productive way or wait until your partner has had enough and they're out the door. Because I'm going to tell you, when you weaponize incompetence, those are your two options. And if you don't want to do something, be honest about it and then have a real conversation with your partner about whether or not your partner's okay with doing it or whether or not you want to have somebody else do it or whether or not you just want to agree that it never gets done. Um, but pretending, lying, and putting things on your partner's plate, not good relationship skills. So if you know this is happening, I'd love to hear your comments about this. I'd love to hear because a, a lot of times people are accused of this and it's basically they just don't do it to the other person's standards. So they just give up, which that's another topic, which I'll be talking about next week. Um, but this is a thing where you can really, really create serious damage to your relationship because quite frankly, you're just being selfish. And that's self being selfish has no place in a marriage, not if you want a successful one. So let me know your comments. If you would like to learn more about how to change this dynamic in your relationship, I'm happy to talk with you. Um, you can send, put a message, you can DM me, you can put a message in the comment section, you can send me an email at leslie, L E S L I, at foundationscoachingnc.com. But really, this behavior has got to stop. So until next week, Stay loving.